Good evening, morons. I'm going to teach you the basics of loans. If you want to just learn about the payment function, skip to this timestamp. This is not financial advice. Talk to a professional if you need help. Otherwise, let's get going. So let's say for the sake of example that you're poor and you need to borrow $100 from me because you're poor and I'm not. As the person lending you money, I say, all right, you know, I'll let you borrow 100, but I need to know a couple of things. First, when will you pay me back? And you say, mm, a year, I can give you back the full 100 in one year. And I say, all right, one year, that's cool. But, you know, I could be doing a lot of stuff with my 100 in that year. For instance, I could be putting my money into the stock market and getting 10% a year. So what does that mean, 10% a year? What I mean is that I, as the lender, think that I can put $100 into the stock market and at the end of the year, I'll get the 100 back plus 10% of whatever I put in. And that works out to $110. So if I'm giving you $100 and a full year to pay me back, I'm expecting a full $110 at the end of that year to match the stock market. Now you might say, I get it, but the stock market goes up, down, sideways, and in circles. You know, I, I watch Wolf of Wall Street. The stock market might show you 10%, that might show you negative 3%, might show you a good time, might show you it's hairy ass. I'm not going to do that unless you ask. So I'll give you exactly what you ask for. You ask 2%, I give 2%. You ask 5%, I give 5%, but no more. And I say, all right, fair enough. I'll give you 100 and I'll expect 5% extra on top, which works out to a total of $105 after one year. So this amount that you borrowed, this $100 right here, that's called the principal. And this extra 5% I'm charging you, this is called the interest rate. In this case, it's the annual interest rate because it's the amount extra after one year. Now, let's say instead of one year, I say, you know, you can pay me back in three years. All right, well, that extra 5% I'm charging you, that's not just at the end of the whole period. Remember, I'm expecting 10% every year from the stock market. So I'm expecting 5% every year from you, hence the annual interest rate. So all right, you know, after one year, that is $105. After year two, you know, we get the usual this thing you know, plus the interest rate times the principal, and we get 110. And then at the very end, we just add another $5. And now we get $115, right? Wrong. This is wrong. Okay. That is not how you calculate interest rates compounding. Now, what do I mean by compounding? Well, I'll show you the correct way. Okay. So at the end of every period, we are not adding a fixed amount. It is not an extra $5 at the end of every period. It's an extra 5% at the end of every period. So the first one, you know, is 105, right? But the second one, we're taking the original 105 and then we're adding an additional 5%, but not of 100, because now the amount that we owe is 105. So, not $110. At the end of year two, we owe $110.25. And just to put that a little bit further, in year three, we don't owe 115. We owe 115.76. And, you know, this seems kind of minor. Like, I don't know, maybe you don't know why I'm stressing this, but it's because over the course of many years, those differences become huge. And to better illustrate that, let's switch the example up a little bit. So let's say that you're a student, right? And you're borrowing, I don't know, $30,000 at a 5% interest rate, and you got to pay it back in 30 years. All right. So now, now we're hitting a little bit closer to home. So I hope you're paying attention. Okay. So let's drag down these formulas a little bit so they can accommodate 30 years, bing, bang, bong, and oh my God, what is, this? so what's the difference there? So that that's 
like 130K basically minus 75K, that's basically $55,000 of difference that you'd miss if, if you were calculating it the wrong way. So remember, you're adding not a fixed dollar amount, you're adding a fixed percentage, okay? Now, just to fully, fully see this, I'm gonna graph it because I want you to see how different these charts look. See this, see this? So, so it, <laughs> it got the colors right. Um, so the wrong thing is just adding this fixed, what is that, 1500 every month, or sorry, year. But the correct way of calculating it, it's like curving up. So it's like exploding. It's shooting up. So the point of showing you this graph is if you let the money sit, it's gonna grow like a tumor. So if you don't want cancer, you'd wanna pay all of the money off right away. Now, you know, it's like $30,000 and you're one of those poors that's not happening. What do we do about that then? Well, we have to pay off $30,000 in 30 years with a 5% annual interest rate. If we pay off some of it sometimes, then we can maybe eventually get the amount owed down to zero. So what if we chipped away at it every year so that at the end of the 30 years, we don't owe anything anymore? Okay, easy, you know, just take the $30,000 and divide by 30 and you get a $1,000 payment every single year. Wrong, that's wrong. That's fucking wrong. The 30,000 grows to 31,500 at the end of year one. So if you take away the 1,000 at the end, you're actually left with more money than you started with. You're left with $30,500. So that plan doesn't really work. Doing that simple little division isn't really how we're gonna get this number. So how are we gonna calculate the yearly payment that allows us to pay everything off in 30 years? That's where the payment function comes into play. All right, so it works like this. So PMT means payment. Now the rate, we start with the interest rate, comma. Now we get the number of years, so that's 30. And finally, we enter the principal or the starting amount. Close parentheses, enter. And it gives us a negative number. I'm just gonna make it positive. $1,951.54. This represents the annual payment we'd have to make to fully pay off $30,000 in 30 years given this 5% annual interest rate. So if we make this payment of about $1,950 every year for 30 years, we will fully pay our loan off. Now you don't need to just trust the function to give you the right number. I mean, you can, but I think for instructive purposes, it'd be good for you to see exactly how this thing works. So to see a full timeline of the amount owed, payments, and stuff like that, we can make what's called an amortization schedule. In the context of a loan, an amortization schedule is basically just paying off a loan over time. That's what amortization means when we're talking about loans. And that basically describes what we were just going over. So we'll start out by laying the columns. Okay, so beginning balance, full payment, interest, principal, payment, I should say, interest, payment, and ending balance. Okay, now let's extend the Roni. It's a bit, it's a bit much. Let's extend, let's extend, let's, okay, cool. For year one, the beginning balance is, of course, $30,000. It's still red. Whoops. All right, now I changed the formatting to make it easier to read. The full payment is going to be the same every single year. That was the whole point of this calculation over here. So that's going to be approximately 1952. Some of that is going to go to interest. So remember, we're getting charged 5% every year on the amount that we owe, which in this case is $30,000. So that's a total of 1,500. So if the full payment is 1,952 and we had to pay 1,500 to interest, we're left with $452 that actually went to paying off the loan. So if we wanna see what our ending balance is or how much we owe at the end of the year, 
we take the $30,000 and we subtract the amount that went to the principal, which is 452. So we're left with 29,548. Great, so year two's beginning balance is of course, whatever we ended in year one, that'd be 29,548. Again, the full payment is 1952. Some of it goes to interest. So again, we take the 5% of now, rather than 30,000, our new balance is 29,548. So we take 5% of that. We take the difference for the full payment and what went to interest to get what actually goes to paying off our loan. And we take the beginning balance, subtract the principal payment, and we have our new ending balance. And now these formulas are in a place where we can just drag this down all the way. And if we did everything correctly, we should see a zero in the bottom right corner because that'll represent our ending balance at the end of the 30 years being zero, let's go. All right, so awesome. We just paid our loan off in time. And so you can see the payment function does work. And that basically covers the basics of loans. So I'm gonna show you a convention in these Excel thingies. And it's to make these hard inputs, meaning stuff you just type, uh, blue, so that you can tell them apart for things that are just formulas, such as this and all of this and all this and all this. So it becomes obvious where I wanna say, okay, maybe my loan is actually only $20,000. How does that affect my payments? Oh, okay, so now it's $1,300 instead of like 1950. All right, what about 15,000? And that's $15 actually. <laughs> what if it's 15,000? And rather than 5%, it's 6%, maybe it's 15 years. And as you can see, oh, yeah, now that it's 15 years, the stuff below the 15 years doesn't make sense. So I'll delete that temporarily. So that's that. So anyways, this has not, not been financial advice, okay? Talk to a professional if you need help. Thank you. Oh, and I'll leave a link to this spreadsheet in the description.